But I don't want to go outside smelling like jollof rice, rice and stew, a mutu and all kind of a, I don't want to go outside smelling like that. You see what I'm saying? What up, it's your girl, Mena. In this video, we are talking about 10 things that I do to make myself happy. I'm all about other people doing things for me. Obviously, I'm married. Obviously, I have family, friends, but I've just learned the power that is being responsible for my own happiness. So if you are excited about the video, keep on watching. Make sure you also follow me on Instagram at Mena underscore Adib yeah, also join my text community because it's free and you should be a part of it. You can text me one-on-one. -on -one. Yes, it's me. Yes, it's my phone number. The links to all of that are down below. If you're not subscribed, make sure you do that too. And let's just go ahead and get on into it, okay? All right, also I'm, I'm gonna link below this wrap sweater dress if you are interested in that. Also my watch and bracelet, Amazon, not Amazon, JBW and Amazon. I'll link the necklace that's Amazon as well and the Gucci earrings. Ow. This is <laughs> my silk press blowout with clip-ins just in case you're wondering. So number one is my flower subscription. I love flowers. I didn't grow up getting flowers a lot. It just wasn't something that I bought. And you know, I might've gotten a bouquet or so, you know, from a boyfriend, little carnation in high school around Valentine's Day, that kind of a thing. You know what I'm saying? But as it relates to a bouquet of flowers, I haven't been one to get flowers very often. And to me, it didn't feel like it was something that was important, but my friend from college, Janelle B. Stewart on YouTube and on IG and on all socials, really, she talks about how she used to go buy her own flowers every single week. And it was a strange concept to me because I'm like, wait, you buy your own flowers? Like, shouldn't that be someone else buying it for you? It made me think of like when you make, like you, you throw your own birthday party, but there's a place for that too. So I was like, hold on. And I would follow her stories and her posts and she always talked about it. And I was intrigued. I was intrigued. So I was like, wait, this is like okay to do. You know how sometimes we feel like you might need permission to do something because it's unusual. Watching her buy her own self flowers every week gave me permission to do the same thing. I was like, you know what? I want to do that. I like the idea of having flowers, fresh flowers in the house all the time. Why not? So I did some research and I found two companies. I settled on Book. Books. The Book Co, whatever it's called. Link is down below. I settled on them and I've been using them for several months now. It's gotta be like six months. So I thought about getting them once a month and I was like, no, flowers don't last a whole month. Maybe a week and a half, you know what I'm saying? And I knew that I wanted to always have flowers in my house. So I decided to do the two weeks, so the bi-weekly subscriptions and I love that they come right to my door. So I'm not having to go out because I don't know how to arrange flowers unless it's just a bouquet of roses. I don't know how to pick everything and put it all together. I don't know all of that. So I love how with Books, it comes right to your door. It comes from Ecuador actually, which is so fantastic. Comes to your door, fresh. They bloom over a few days. I keep them in my kitchen on the center countertop. I use a Lazy Susan, as you can see here. It's beautiful, it turns. I love the vase that I have from Serena and Lily. It just looks so beautiful. So I have the biggest or the largest subscription. I think it's, not I think. It's three bouquets in one. And then I put the water in. I, change, I used to change the water every single day but I've learned that it can go like two days, sometimes three without changing, whatever. I love it. I love coming into my kitchen and seeing my flowers. I had one bouquet that was so aromatic. It, it made me so happy. I was excited because my sense of smell is very strong and we'll get to that in a second. I love seeing my flowers every single day, except for when they die and I'm waiting on my next delivery. But I love how it comes right to the door with FedEx. It's just amazing. I think it's great. It's one of those things where if you have the money in your budget, and thank God I do now, like with my job, God has really increased us in such a tremendous way that I'm like, I need to be doing things that make me happy. It feels good to know that I'm doing X, Y, Z, items for myself. And that's why this video is about the top 10 things that I do for myself to make myself happy. Okay. Now I told you how much I love fragrance because my sense of smell is very strong. And so I had a bouquet of flowers that smell really good. Fragrance is the second thing that I do for myself to make myself happy. I have probably 40 fragrances and that is the most I've ever had in my whole entire life. Growing up, I had Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue. I had taking my mom's Jador, which smelled like, it was like well, some white diamond 
diamonds. What was the fragrance? Comment below. Let me know. It's like something white diamonds. It's my life. Straight up old lady in a funeral. Um, in a <laughs> old lady in a in a in an old folks home. But it was so intriguing to wear fragrance. But of course, we didn't have the money, so I had Dolce Gabbana light blue. I had got it for a birthday, girl. I had that fragrance for like 15 years. I barely touched it because it was so expensive. I felt like I could not use it too much. It had to be used on special occasions. So what I would use a lot of times was a body spray, right? You can always find them on my channel. I'll link one of my latest fragrance videos below for you. But I love fragrance now. Ever since quarantine, I was like, you know what? Again, what am I doing for myself? Because I started to feel really frumpy and I've had episodes of that. I have a video on that. Make sure you watch it. Just getting back to myself. But fragrance is one of the ways that I've been treating myself to feel good, smell good. So like I said, I have a lot of fragrances, honey. I even break down my fragrances into travel versions of them. So I don't purchase travel fragrances. I do it myself. So I'm gonna link the atomizers Atom, atomizers, whatever they call them. I'm gonna link those below and I will link the fragrance video that I did most recently so you can take a look at what I got. But just know that your girl got a lot of fragrances and I'm at this point more like a, I wouldn't say a hoarder. I would say more like a collector, you know? Like there's a difference. It's not a mess. So it's not a hoarding situation, I just love it. Along the same lines of fragrance is candles. Your girl burns, that's number three. Your girl burns candles every single day in just about every single room. So even right now as we speak, I got a candle burner behind me. It's Jackie Aina Forever Mood. This is Trick, cause during the, for the candle club, we got Trick and Treat, honey. So, so right now I'm burning Trick. I have a candle here in the entryway. I have a candle in the guest bathroom. I have a candle in the living room. I got a candle in the kitchen. That is burning. I got a candle in the breakfast room, breakfast nook, whatever. That area, that is burning. I have candles in the bathroom, but I turn those on in the evening and we'll get to that. So I love to burn candles. One of the things that I do when I wake up in the morning is put to, is turn my candles on. So I have the rechargeable candle lighters. I've got the wick trimmer and I go around trimming the wick, lighting my candles and I'll let them burn for hours, honey. I buy candles all the time. So I have a lot of candles on reserve. I've got about 10 candles on reserve, Bath and Body, Forever Mood. I almost said Forever Mood. Forever Mood, Nest and Veluspa, stay me, keep me stocked up, which I appreciate. So I always have candles to burn. So, you know, we be burning, not concerning what nobody gotta say. I'm just like, again, these things make me happy. My sense of smell is very pronounced and I wanna always smell good in my, in my body. And I wanna, I want to smell my house and I want it to smell good. Like I wanna walk into every area and smell something that smells good. Like I don't like to cook and then still smell the food in the house. I burn, I don't burn, I cook coffee on the stove in a pot that I don't care about and I just let it boil and boil and boil and boil while I'm cooking. And then of course, after I've finished cooking because that cancels out the smell of onion and garlic and all of the stuff that we use in our food. Like if you're from the Caribbean, if you're like Latin or any, any of those cultures that use lots of rich flavors in your food, you know what I mean. Our food can funk up the house, okay? I'm not saying if the, the food smell, the food, I'm not saying the food stinks, but I don't want to go outside smelling like jollof rice, rice and stew, a mutsu and all kind of a, I don't want to go outside smelling like that. You see what I'm saying? I want to be outside and someone is like, ma'am, what fragrance are you wearing? You know, and I want to be able to say, oh, this is Marc Jacobs, you know, Daisy, you know, this is Chanel number five. This is Tom Ford Soleil Blanc. You know, this is Joe Malone. Alone, what's it called? <laughs> Velvet, Rose, and Oud. You see what I'm saying? I want to be able to give you, you know, a fragrance that you have not ever heard of. I want to pique your interest when you pass by me and get a, uh, and get a, oh, look at me, that. no, I fix my hair, I can't do it. <laughs> you know, I want to, I want to give you a whiff of my sillage as I pass by. And I want you to stop me and say, ma'am, excuse me, what fragrance are you wearing? That actually happened to me one time I was on lunch. If you watch my vlog, you would already know, you know the story, okay? That did happen to me, praise the Lord. So now, now the next thing that I do, I mentioned it kind of, was lighting candles when I get up, right? I typically wake up at four in the morning. Between four and five is my sweet spot. And let me explain why. 10 years ago, you couldn't have paid me to get up at four in the morning. But I learned how to get up that early because I had to. I used to work a job that I had to start at 7.30. I was an admin at a school. And because of where I lived, I had to leave home at 6.30. I was a new mom. I had to bring Nene to school and I needed to get him to school and myself to my job 
before 7.30. I was late often, it was a problem. So in order to do all of that, but also in the morning, work out, read my devotional, shower, do my makeup, hello, that's important. I was filming videos in the morning while I was getting ready for work and then going to work, driving like 40 minutes in traffic, you never know. I needed to a lot, oh, working out, I just did that right? I needed to a lot time because I, just needed a lot of time. So I had to get up early. It just had to happen. So I turned into a 4 a.m., 5 a.m. work up, per, work, uh, wake up person. And of course, some days I would get up at five, sometimes 5.30, and it would just be, it would just be the bare minimum that I was doing that morning. But on good days, I was getting up like 4, 4.15, 4.30 to really make the most out of my morning. Now, that job is long and gone. I now, of course, work for myself, which I love. I get to manage myself, manage my time, work from home. It is, it is a huge blessing. I've kept that routine going. So most weekdays I get up at 4, 4.15, 4.30 because it just works. Me is our five-year-old, almost six. He's used to getting up by seven o'clock. Doesn't matter what happens. Doesn't matter when he goes to bed. He gonna be up by seven o'clock. So in order for me to still get the most out of my mornings, do me, set my candles, clean a little bit, do my devotion, check my email, just breathe, have a cup of coffee, whatever it is, I get up early to do that, to have time for my Myself. So if you're a mom and a wife, you will understand, or just a busy person, you will understand how valuable time to yourself is. And not only that, if you're someone who is, you know, about her ish, you know what I'm saying? You got goals, you out here grinding or whatever, then you have heard about waking up early. Okay, the latest and greatest and the oldest and greatest, these folks are not getting up at nine in the morning. They're not getting up at 10 in the morning. You see what I'm saying? They're getting up early. They're getting their day started. I was recently reading Miracle Morning. I actually just finished it, but I, that's a recent read. I've been doing this morning, early morning wake up for a while now. But that's a recent read and that also motivated me. It's like the minute you hear your alarm go off, get up. It's not time to now start thinking and contemplating and making excuses and, and making all kinds of reasons. Just get up and then start your morning. I feel what he calls it, how Elrod, I get what he calls it, but I'll link that book below. It is really, really good. It's a great way to just wake you up to realize if you want to live a mediocre life, you're going to be a mediocre person. And that kind of a person isn't really powerful. It's just, you're not going to really be about nothing. You know what I'm saying? That's your grammar for you for today. Okay. English, a I English, I got an A plus, but you ain't going to be about nothing. You see what I'm saying? And I am definitely not that kind of person. I love waking up early on my days that I get up early, I feel so much better. I get a lot more done. I mean, when I get up, I'm not doing social media stuff unless I'm editing something. I'm strictly, like I said, work, setting my candles, cleaning up a little bit, working out, doing my devotionals, worship. I play worship music. I'm listening. I'm, I'm singing. I'm thinking what I'm reading. Maybe whatever the case is. Yeah. I'll check email, but I'm not checking my social feeds. I'm just being for that two or two and a half, one and a half hours before I transition into to my other roles in my life. You see what I'm saying? So it's priceless. I did mention worship music in one of the next items that I do for myself is I play worship music all the time, every day. It's off right now because I'm filming. I don't want to be stricken with a copyright strike. But worship music is always playing in this house. The Lord God Almighty and his presence is welcome in this place. It has to be just ever flowing, permeating through our home. And I just love it. It's peaceful for me. It's peaceful for us. We've been doing this for years and ever since I got the Amazon Echo, I love that thing, girl. We, I have one in the living, in the kitchen. I have one in the studio and I have one in Nene's room. In my room, I have the Google Home and that was a gift from Sephora Squad. But the Amazon Echo is fantastic. I'm always playing music. It's just so peaceful to just be, you know, moving about and you hear Maverick City music playing in the background. I just love it, you know? Comment below and let me know if you have an Amazon Echo or if you're a music person and you love to have music playing and, and like just low in the house. Love that. One of the other things that I do to to keep myself happy is reflecting and staying positive. And this goes along with my waking up early in the morning, doing my devotional right now. I'm reading, or I'm right now I'm using the book, Trusting God Day by Day by Joyce Meyer. And I like that book, but I said to myself, you know what, next year, I wanna actually dig deeper into the workbooks that I have. I have one from Priscilla Shire, <laughs> whatever her name is, you know, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I don't know how to say it, okay? But I have one from her. I have a few others that are workbooks. They go deeper into the word and I just, 
I need more. So I'm gonna be doing that for the next year, but of course I wanna finish what I started. So I'm gonna finish off the Trusting God Day by Day devotional. It is really good, I'll link it below. You might enjoy it. It's a real cute and short and sweet devotional and then the word, it's good. So with that, I've been challenging myself to stay positive. If you, if you watch my vlogs, I talk about this a lot. You know, I come from humble beginnings, but God has done such an awesome work in my life where I'm way more financially comfortable now than I've ever been in my whole entire life life, right? But that doesn't mean that I don't have problems. That doesn't mean money doesn't money doesn't free us up from day-to-day -day life struggles. So obviously there are things that come up and reasons to be sad or down in the dumps or whatever it is. But me taking control of my life and my thoughts and my choices is also me deciding to think about and focus on the good things in my life and the reasons why I get to smile, like I get to do this job, like I said, from home by myself, not having to deal with toxic, psychotic, sociopathic coworkers, you know what I'm saying? Like, listen, it's just me, you know? If there's a sociopath, it's, it's me, you know? God forbid, you know? I'm just saying, but it's me. I don't have to engage online with people if I don't want to. And I love that because I'm an actual introvert. You might not believe me, but I'm an introvert, okay? I don't need to be around people all the time. It's overwhelming, it's annoying. I need to just be in peace and quiet. It's like, what? Can you stop speaking? You speak too much, you talk too much. What are you saying? Those are my thoughts in staff meetings. What are you talking about? Like, what are you even saying right now? <laughs> You know, so reflecting on the positive, staying happy and peaceful, all a part of the top 10 things that I do to make myself happy because I'm in control of that. Yes, I revere the Lord God because he is my savior. But then again, he gives us free will. I have the will to make choices on what I think about, what I do, what I'm watching, what I'm listening to, the thoughts that I want to just, uh, what's it, is it ruminate? Ruminate around in my mind again and again and again. I'm in control of that now. It doesn't mean that I don't find myself ruminating over things, I do. And then I have to have the presence of mind to say, wait a minute, what am I doing right now? And then reverse those thoughts. That's a whole different topic, but that is definitely one of the 10 things that I'm doing. Comment below and let me know if you're doing the same. So as it relates to work, another thing that I do is I implement office hours. So I told you that in the morning time, part of what I do, light my candles, maybe I'll clean up a little bit, devotion, work out, any number, any combination of those things, right? Depending on how I'm feeling and what time I get up. Well, and I also mentioned that I don't check socials in the morning. I definitely will check my email to get a head start on things for sure. Edit if I need to, all of that. But I had to implement office hour. It is a fantastic blessing to work for myself. Okay. That goes without saying. But being an entrepreneur can sometimes end up meaning you work 24 seven. And I used to do a little bit of that. And I said, no ma'am, I cannot do that. This is not gonna be enjoyable if I'm just a slave to this job. So I had to implement office hours. I was like, no, I have to do this for myself. So I obviously get up early and I get a head start, blah, blah, blah. But I love to have a cutoff time at four o'clock. But actually right now the cutoff time is more like two o'clock. And that's crazy because, you you know what I'm saying? Our baby is in public school, praise the Lord. So we saving on that, that private school tuition. But what that means is that we don't have that like four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock pickup time. So what that means is that, hmm, you know what I'm saying? I can't work as long as I want to. I gotta go and get in a carpool line. And being in a carpool line is like a whole nother job. So I can't work until four o'clock anymore. I gotta leave home at like two something. Ugh. So what that means is I told myself so that I'm not going like from one project into the car, get in carpool line. I haven't had a chance to breathe and think. I have in my calendar a two o'clock cutoff time to get in the car, like just to do a little one to one two, clean up, whatever, and then get in the car, eat, eat. Because there's sometimes I don't eat until like two, like I'm like focused and whatever. So to get in the carpool line by three and then come home and all that stuff, and then it's four. So <laughs> The four o'clock work hours ending at four is actually two o'clock, okay? So that's why also, back to one of my original, one of my earlier points, getting up early is so key. I only have the early morning until two o'clock really to work because then when I get home, I don't wanna work. I have to turn off, it's, it's too much. So then I will do bedtime or any, any, any iteration of that, you know, we'll do bedtime, what have you. And then if I need to pick back up on something, I'll do that at nighttime, like 7.38. But honestly, most times because I get up early, I don't wanna do all that. I will find myself in bed laying down at 7.30 and I have no qualms about it. You know why? Because I get up early, usually. And I don't mind going to bed early. I'm not a late night person. You ain't going, to okay, so like every now and then for some strange reason, I might be up until 11 o'clock, but that is not my baseline at all. It is not 
what I like to do. Don't call me, don't try and contact me, just don't do it, please don't do it, you know? I'm not interested. Morning time, oh yeah, holla at me. Call me at the top in the morning and I'll answer the phone, you know what I'm saying? I'll be wide awake, we can talk, you see? But midnight, 11, don't do it. You see, I try to go to bed like between eight and 10, Earlier the better, obviously. It just depends on what's going on in the nighttime. But office hours are key, they're key. If you are an entrepreneur, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. There are some emails that just have to wait. They just have to wait. I used to feel like I needed to respond to everything very quickly and I had my email on the front face of my phone and I was always on it. No, 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 no. I moved my email to a different folder so it takes a little more effort, a few more presses to find it. That's intentional because I don't wanna always see my email and see what's happening. No ma'am, no alerts, I'm not getting alerts. I have to go search my email to see who has emailed me. And if it's not something that I'm I know is coming down the pipeline that's pressing, I will get to it in the morning. I'll get to it at five in the morning or eight in the morning, whatever. Not in the evening time, the answer is no, you know what I'm saying? In addition to the office hours is setting work days. Now, theoretically or ideally, I'm working Monday through Thursday. And then ideally, I'm taking Friday, Saturday, Sunday off. That doesn't always happen because there's sometimes there's something, I might like push it off a little bit, which is I'm not proud of, you know what I'm saying? I'm usually very conscientious, but sometimes things happen. And, and I find myself working on the weekends, which I'm not proud of, like I said, because it bleeds into like peace, family time, rest, whatever, like just lifetime. But on my calendar, I do have Fridays as an off day because yo, what is the benefit of working for yourself if you can't have Fridays off? Like, hello? Ugh, gross. So I put it on my calendar and Ideally, Fridays are off, you know what I'm saying? And, and with that, I try to be intentional to have lunch or to do something with a girlfriend every Friday. Now, that doesn't always happen because everyone's busy. Friday might not work out for everybody, but if there is someone that's available, I try to ahead of time plan out my weeks like, yo, you free on Friday, let's meet up for you know, whatever. I try to do like a standing monthly thing or what have you. I don't have a lot of friends, but with the ones that I do have, I like to meet up and just check in because I'm working from home. So I don't see my friends on a daily, weekly basis unless we're intentional. When, you, when you're grown, you gotta be intentional to be meeting up, honey. Unless y'all neighbors or something. I'm not, I don't have neighbors as friends like that. I don't, actually, let me not, let me not qualify it. I don't have neighbors as friends. And with Houston, girl, everyone is like 25, 30, 40 minutes away, okay? So yes, Fridays are my girlfriend days. I like to go to lunch, maybe some shopping, massage, anything. I do my own nails, but just anything to just catch up and have girl time. We need that girl time. So Fridays are my days to do that. And that is a huge part of the 10 things that I do to make myself happy. It's just a done deal, okay? We are having lunch. We're going somewhere fancy. We're getting dressed up. We're giving ourselves a reason to put on cute clothes and high heels. Unless you want to wear sneakers, do you? But I'm going to do me. We talked about this already. <laughs> you know, we discussed this already. I'm going to do me at all times. You see what I'm saying? So I'm going to put a little wrap dress on for my high heels. I'm going to do whatever I please, okay? Because it makes me happy. And then I'm going to meet you at the spot. And we're going to have some champagne. We're going to have some, you know, appetizers, all of it, you know, no limits. I love it, no limit soldiers. <laughs> No limit soldiers, ew. And then the last thing that I do to make myself happy is my nighttime routine. I love my bathroom. I've never had a bathroom so beautiful and so peaceful. So I have candles in there, one on the bathroom counter and then one on the sill next to the shower. I keep a candle behind me and in front of me, honey, because it's just so peaceful. I love it. I don't take baths. I didn't grow up taking baths. So it's not something I think about. I have to be like be intentional to take a bath. I do showers, but I do have a stool and I sit in front of my, my bathroom sink. I have my tripod with, with a ring light around it. I put my phone on it. I got my iPad and my iPad stand. I've got my space heater because I like to be warm. I got my candle, as I mentioned, uh, I, everything, you know? I might do my skincare, I might steam my face, do watch a show, any number of, listen to a podcast, listen to music, any number of things in the midst, and I turn the light off, so it's just the candle and maybe the ring light if I'm using it. Yeah, I usually am using it. And that's just the vibe. The vibe, that guy, you know that song. <laughs> You know, it's a whole vibe and I love it. It is my sanctuary, you know? And I close the door and when I go in there, it's like, don't come in here. Don't come in here, ask me questions, go ask daddy. Don't do, not don't, do don't talk to me. Don't even speak to me, you see what I'm saying? I'm in the bathroom, it's going down up in here. You are not allowed, no one is allowed to come in here. And I could be in there for like, you know what I'm saying, 20 minutes if I'm not, if I'm like tired or in a rush or whatever, but girl, when I have time, I have time. So it can literally be like 30 minutes, it could be an hour, baby. 
I'm watching a show or a YouTube video and I'm really into it, I could be steaming girls sitting there. I, I could be done with my whole skincare routine, but just still sitting there because it's comfortable and it's just my spot. Okay, so those are the top 10 things that I do for myself to make myself happy. And I hope that I gave you some ideas. If you do any other things for yourself, I want you to comment and let me know because I'm always looking for ideas. I don't think it just has to be 10, you know? I want it all. Don't limit me, you see what I'm saying? So if you have other things that you do, girl, let me know. I mean, I also get a Brazilian wax as a bonus. I do it once a month. I wanna get laser, so we'll see. I wanna finish my wax passes. And yeah, girl. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I want you to comment below, give the video a thumbs up, also make sure you are subscribed. Follow me on Instagram because it's a must. And as always, I'm glad you're here and thank you for watching the video. Bye.